On page 272 of the textbook, you will find problem number 26, part A. A rectangular sheet of perimeter 36 centimeters and dimensions x centimeters by y centimeters is to be rolled into a cylinder as shown in part A of the figure. What values of x and y give the largest volume? So the idea is pretty simple. I have a rectangle with a given perimeter that I want to take and just roll until it's a cylinder, right? Wrap it around itself. And what I see right away is that the dimension y becomes the height of my cylinder, and the dimension x becomes the circumference of a circle at the top and bottom. I only really need to consider it once, though. So the volume of a cylinder we know is pi times r squared h. So I need expressions to plug in for r and h. Well, the height is y, and the radius I'll have to get from the circumference. See, I know the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. r circumference is equal to x, so 2 pi r equals x, telling me the radius is x over 2 times pi. I'm told the perimeter is 36 centimeters. So 36 is 2 times x plus 2 times y, telling me that x and y add together to be 18, and that the height is 18 minus x centimeters. This lets me substitute for r and h and simply have an equation on the variable x. All right, so here is my volume function. Let's simplify this a little bit. All right, one of the pi's cancels. I'm gonna write that coefficient out front, one over four times pi. And let's distribute the x squared through my parentheses. So 18x squared minus x cubed is my volume function. All right, so we're asked to maximize volume. So let's take a derivative and find our critical values. Constant multiple rule says I could just leave the 1 over 4 pi out front and take the derivative of what's in here. So let's see, that's going to be 36x minus 3x squared. My critical points will happen when that's equal to 0, because that derivative is defined everywhere. I can factor out a 3x. Telling me there would be critical points at 0 and 12. I'm only going to write down the 1 at 0, though. Excuse me. I'm only going to write down the 1 at 12. Because I want to consider 0 centimeters to be an endpoint into my domain. My original rectangle had a width of x centimeters. So, of course, if I considered that to be 0, I wouldn't even have a rectangle. So, just 0 has to be less than x for sure. And if I look at this equation, um, if y were equal to 0, then x would have to equal 18. And you could look at this equation to see that relationship. So I actually think x has to be between 0 and 18. So I could consider that the domain of the variable x. All right, so I found my critical point. And what I want to do now is provide three different ends to this solution, right? Like it was a choose your own adventure. Right, because we know three different ways to look for absolute mins and absolute maxes, or mins and maxes in general. So we found the critical point and we have a derivative. The first way I want to finish this problem is by using the extreme value theorem. Because I have a continuous function over a finite closed interval, I know the, the function has to have an absolute minimum and an absolute maximum, and that those values happen either at an endpoint or at a critical point in the domain. So I can just simply find the volume at both endpoints in this critical point. The largest thing in this table will be the absolute maximum that I'm looking for, and the smallest thing in the table will be the absolute minimum. Well, if I plug in zero, the volume zeroes out. If I plug in 18, well, let's see, I'll have 18 times 18 squared is 18 cubed minus 18 cubed, and the volume will zero out, so I really only need to think about what the volume is when x is 
12. So let's work on the inside of the parentheses first. So I have 18 times 12 squared minus 12 to the third power is 864. I'm going to divide that by 4. And the volume would have to be 216 over pi cubic centimeters. Well, that's clearly the biggest thing. These two things are the smallest thing, so the maximum occurs when x is 12. The problem asks me for an x and a y, so I have a 12 centimeter x, and my rectangle would have to be 12 centimeters by 18 minus 12 is 6 centimeters. So, the dimensions that maximize my cylinder are x equals 12 by y equals 6 centimeters, and this would finish the problem if you were using the extreme value theorem. Okay, so I wanted to solve this two other ways. So this would be one way, and we're absolutely done. But I want to put us back in that situation where we've just arrived at this critical point. We've arrived at this critical point, x equals 12, and we're saying, okay, we need to check to see if a min or a max happen at that point. One, other, uh, one of our other options would be to use the first derivative test for local extreme values. So again, we have a volume function, we have a first derivative, and a critical point. So all I really want to do is see what's going on in the first derivative at 12, right? If this is a plus and a minus, I know that is a local max. Well, if I increase to that point and decrease after that, it's actually going to be an absolute max. So I need to plug in some sample points. I think the easiest thing to plug in on that interval is x equals one. And on this interval, I think we better use x equals 13, though anything bigger than 12 would work. Okay, so x equals one is pretty easy. Let's plug that into the first derivative because we're looking for the sign of the first derivative. In here, I would get 36 minus three is a positive 33 times a positive number is positive. So I am increasing until I get to 12. Now let's plug in x equals 13. So I have 36 times 13 minus three times 13 squared. Minus 39 times a positive is a negative. So my first derivative increases and then decreases forever, making that a maximum. So there is a maximum at x equals 12, making the dimensions x equals 12 centimeters by y equals 6 centimeters again, confirming what we saw in our first, first method. So one more time, I want to put us back in the situation where we've done all this work to get to this critical point, and we still need to check to see if a min or a max is happening there, and our only other method would be to use the second derivative test for local extreme values. In the second derivative test for local extreme values, I need to know the critical point, but I also have to take a second derivative. Well, there's nothing really hard here, and this makes this a good choice for this problem because this is a very easy second derivative to calculate. I have my critical point, and so I substitute it into the second derivative. And let's see, I have a 36 minus six times 12, and I would get a minus 36 over 4 pi, which is minus 9 over pi, the only important thing there is that is less than 0, which means at that critical point I have a concave down shape. Well, that concave down shape means this critical point lies at the top, which makes that a maximum value. So there is a maximum at x equals 12 centimeters by y equals 6 centimeters, no matter the method we use to test the critical point. The reason I wanted to do this three different ways was to show you that there were, was always more than one way to do this. Personally, for this problem, because the domain is so easy to find, I like using the extreme value theorem. I find that a lot of my students like using the first derivative test but on a problem like this, I always like to show folks that the second derivative test is easy to use because the second derivative was so easy to find. Most of the time when we're doing a 
optimization problem, we only have to use one of the methods, but I thought it would be fun to try all three on this problem.